um, there, have you heard about this French book? Um, I, I don't get the first part of the, the title right, but it's something like Les Hommes, Je Déteste. Um, je le, je I, Déteste. I hate man. I hate man. Yeah, yeah, which I, was, read, I read the review in The Guardian. They loved it. Yes. And <laughs> it's absolutely shocking. And in this interview with the, uh, with this, with the author, yeah. who actually looked like a girl, looked like a pretty normal woman in the photo that they used in the Guardian. But I googled her, and now she has shaved hair, and she pretty much well, she looks like a hardcore lesbian. But she is married to a guy, and they have a cat together. Surprise, surprise. Um, in the said that she she loves her husband, but, but he's her, her philosophy is that you. She encourages women to just hate all men by default because you have to be suspicious of men. So hate all men by default, and then you can make exceptions for, for some, yes, like exactly. the one you marry. And in the interview, she said that she actually ha hasn't had any negative experiences with men, but she worked in a feminist organization uh, that helps uh, female rape uh, victims and victims of sexual assault. And because she worked there, she knows that all perpetrators are men and that men are evil. So working in this organization made her hate men. That's, uh, and I think that's, that's really what we're seeing. It's this indoctrination, this fueling of hate that actually these women haven't experienced themselves. Uh, my my ex-girlfriend, there was a situation where she thought I attacked her and she was shaking in the corner of the bathroom. And I was like, what happened? And she was told to be afraid of men, really. And there was a situation where uh, I accidentally touched her in, her in her face and she thought I hit her. And her immediate re uh, reaction was thinking that I abused her, which wasn't the situation at all. And I was so shocked that somebody and she had never experienced any violence in her life her parents are happily married and she hasn't experienced any negativity of man but she was so brainwashed into think is being hyper alert and hyper afraid of potential perpetrators that that was her very un inappropriate reaction and i felt so deeply hurt because i i never meant any harm to anybody um, yeah, it's, it's very scary. It's very sad. Very sad for, for women that are afraid of men, that they shouldn't be afraid of. Yeah, I saw this tweet a few weeks ago that really made me think by this lady I follow for some reason. And she was talking about, she has a teenage daughter and she was saying that at the school of her teenage daughter, some boys were saying that we don't need feminism anymore because women have achieved equality. And then she was so, out. her daughter broke down crying. How can they be so insensitive, whatever. And then she commented on Twitter that, isn't the fact that we're, we live our lives constantly being afraid of men enough of an oppression? You know, and, and this- Well, this, uh, well I ask where that comes from. from. That there yeah. are yeah. women who literally do live their lives. I, I, I honestly can't tell if they're being serious. Or if, or if it's just an act. But, but if, it, if it is serious, then it's terrifying that it's, women it's are very, actually... Feminism is very cruel to women. You know, I've seen so many women saying, I didn't realize I've been raped. And then I found feminism and realized that I've spent my life being abused and assaulted and raped. And it's like... So like, they end up raping the trauma. You were, you were totally happy and confident and comfortable, and now you're terrified and you want to thank feminism. Can I? I was talking to. I was. Can I insist that we start a petition to change it to the girl who cried wolf? That genuinely <laughs> might be the source of this problem. That is very true. Uh, not the girl, the feminist that cried wolf. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to blame. Uh, women per se, it, it, it's not women, obviously. No, it's not, but maybe the fact that we call it the boy who cried wolf means that girls never had that introspective. Maybe. I, I would like- but I do wanna make, I just wanted to make a brief statement before we wrap up, because I, I read the news today that Trump is, is probably going to nominate Amy Barrett to the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. So I just wanted to say for the first time that Sometime in the 80s, maybe in the early 90s, I was sexually assaulted by 
Amy Barrett. <laughs> I just wanted to know You have you heard <laughs> it here first. Time, Sorry, I can't believe I just laughed at that. That's really awful. That's really awful. Yeah. Awful. I, I believe you. I believe all women. I believe all women. You. Uh no, I, I would I, like I'm to share. I'm gonna stop making my placard now. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to share a really terrible story that I heard from a friend today. She came into my shop, I cut her hair, and she told me That's uh, awful. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, her hair was in a hor in horrible condition. Honestly, it really was. Uh, I, I it really was. But so she came in and she introduced her her boyfriend, uh, her partner to me, and I was so happy because like she was single when I last saw her, and I was so happy to see him. And she said, "Oh, and I'm pregnant," and I was just over the moon, and we were celebrating and all. That. <laughs> yeah, but then I cut her hair, and she told me that because of her hormonal changes, she went during 24 hours, she went through a really dark phase and she, um, she accused him of things as far as I remember correctly. And he was married before and his wife uh, made false allegations against him that he raped her and that he abused her. And so now he can't see his children anymore and like one of the kids has sent him text message the other kid is completely alienated to him and he is so heartbroken and terrified and she abused him during the whole uh relationship and and because she acted this very irrational way like his his current girlfriend the pregnant one he said something awful to her because he was so afraid of losing another child. And she said, and he said something horrible to her. He actually said, um, if you take away my ch uh, our child from me, I will kill you. Uh, but he said it in, a, in, in like, he was distraught. He was very emotional. And I don't want to excuse that uh, at all, but it was a very emotionally charged situation. Then she told the story afterwards, after the whole thing was settled and they were fine again, she told the story to her sister. Her sister called the police. Oh my God. Two police, two police cars showed up and took him out of the house. She started to get cramps because she was like, no, it was, it's a whole misunderstanding. Nothing happened. And they're like, it was reported. We have to arrest him for they that. They do, they do. That's thanks to feminist lobbying, you know. Yes. And this is what really annoys me is the fact that, you know, say, um, it, it, 50 wait, years wait a second. Ago, 50 years ago, a, a female victim, you know, male victims had no power whatsoever, but a female victim could go to the police and say, look, so X, Y, or Z has happened. Can you have a word? if that's what's proportionate or you know yeah. i want to take it to court if that's proportionate and now because of feminist lobbying all a women woman can do is call the police and then they will come in with the heaviest of hands have and have that to. is not empowering female victims you know regardless are a whole let, other let, subject but let me let me finish the story it gets yeah. so much worse no so, really yeah, the police showed up. Uh, she said, it's all a misunderstanding. It, we, we're fine. Uh, no charges. And they had to take yeah. him. She, the whole stress. She started getting cramps. And then they had to call the ambulance. And she was like, don't call the ambulance. I'm pregnant. It happens. It, I'm fine. They had to call the ambulance. He, he only saw that the ambulance is like her partner only saw the ambulance is coming and she's getting into the ambulance. He had no idea what was going on. And then the police officer who unfortunately I have to say is a friend of mine and I, I have to have a word with him. The, the police officer said, uh, Oh, um, this is really horrible. What happened to you? So my advice is uh, get a restraining order do not, and I don't want to, like, it's possible that I get certain things of the story wrong, uh, but I will actually interview her because I said, we need, I need to interview you. This needs to be made public because it was horrible. The police officer said, um, you should not be in contact with him. Don't send him text messages. And if he sends more, 
messages, then uh, that's actually stalking or harassment. And she, like, she was, she was like, she saw me driving off in an ambulance. I have to tell him that I'm okay. He's the father of my child. Now he was not allowed to get anywhere near her anymore for the next, I don't know for how long. The next day, from the next day on, every day, up to three organizations from Women's Aid called her and told her that she is a victim of abuse and that she should press charges. And she said, look, and she said, I have been in an abusive relationship. It, I, it's not abusive. I love it's not him. It. That's not it. And they're like, oh, because you were in an abusive relationship, you are so desensitized. You can't, uh, you can't see that you are a victim. And they, they kept ram ramming it down her throat. And she was like, leave me alone. And they would not leave her alone. Finally, he's allowed to be in her house again. Um, he only just came back into the house, I think, last week. And her whole family now is jumping on the bandwagon and saying, oh, you are with an abuser. And she was like, she was like, leave me. That's not true. And she's like, if, if one more family member tells me that I can't speak for myself, I have to stop talking to my family. And I said, you know what's going to happen then? Then yeah. they're going to say, it's coercive control and your partner is alienating you from your family. And then it's going to be done as well. If, if you guys are Elizabeth uh, had, if you're happy, I, I could probably invite her and we could actually interview her on the show and listen to her, sh uh, her story because uh, it's, i my heart was broken and I, because I was so happy for them that they had this future together. And then the police, the system, women's aid are coming in and try to destroy everything that's good. And, and she said, I since he's back, up. It sums up feminism in a way, denying the yeah. woman all agency. You, you don't really know what's happening to you. We have to tell you, we have to kind of interpret the situation for you. You have no you know, mindless, helpless victim. It's just so- And, 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 we, and we force men, in this case, the police, we force men to mansplain to you that you don't have agency. <laughs> It, it, it's, it was absolutely horrible. Sorry for, for, for this long story, uh, but I thought, I thought it was very, very telling where we are as a society right now. Oh, yeah, that was a downer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I totally agree. It's, it's just not something that's, that's easy to follow up, but yeah, um, it's, it, 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 it's it's like to be honest it does feel remember back in our very first episode um i said feminism feels like a, a trickster in a in an old fable that be careful what you wish for because mm -hmm. what you thought you wanted feminism will give you exactly the opposite um mm -hmm. and you said actually that feels more biblical it feels satanic um yeah. and and this this is what it's like that um you have a, a very simple good intention to relay something to your sister in confidence and then she makes a move and the police make a move and all of the women's agencies make a move and, and, and everything is taken out of your hands even though you are supposed to be the center of the story and everything is being done for you nobody gives a damn what you think you know so yeah. feminism is is exactly that it it steals all of women's victim credit and dictates to them how to behave in order to maximize their victimhood because feminism can then politicize that. It's got nothing to do with women. Women are just currency in a transaction. Yeah. 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 Um, to, to end on a happy note, she said since he moved back in, she, she has never felt safer and she's so happy that he's back and that um, they have a future. And she, but she's, she's really terrified because he's, he's so afraid. He's so afraid that this, this good thing uh, could 
that that she could take the child away again. And I, I mentioned MGTOW, men going their own way. And I said, well, a lot of men now think it's not worth the risk anymore starting a family. But I think, I think it is. I think if you, you just have to be very careful which partner you choose. And even then it can go wrong. Yeah, but, but in you, fairness, I mean, you know, he, by the yeah, sounds of it, chose a bloody lovely partner. And absolutely. unfortunately it was, you know, the people around her and the system in place that almost ruined it and has made him incredibly insecure. Yeah. But if, but if we give up, if, 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 if we are afraid of being together, if we are afraid of loving each other just because it, it has been made unsafe to love each other, then we, then we gave up the fight. And, and I'm absolutely okay with, with people choosing that. Uh, I do not judge MGTOW at all, and I completely understand it. But as, as, had, as had said before, I'm, I'm the one who is positive. I, I want to fight for something and I always want to see the, the good. So uh, to me, there's nothing more beautiful than starting a family, even if it's dangerous, even if there are, yeah, yeah, even if it's, it might be doomed. Uh, do, you, do you guys know this phrase? Uh, this, I don't know who it was. It must have been a Native American. It sounds Native American. What would you do if you knew that the end was uh, the world was ending tomorrow? And he said, the guy said, "I would plant a tree." You told us, yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, it's. It. I think. I think, as I've always said, and and I know that Philip is so tired of hearing it, he got up and left. But <laughs> um, I th I think that the women really have to show their anger at what feminism has done in their name at the start of this conversation elizabeth said to uh, uh, greta you know does it anger you that feminism speaks for you and greta said that she never felt feminism speaks for her but i think what elizabeth meant was does it anger you that feminism claims relentlessly it claims to you? too yeah. And, and it, it takes that, that credit and that power and people give it that validation. So even if you don't feel that it speaks for you, other people feel that it speaks for you. So yeah. I think women, I mean, I, like, I don't understand. They have sons, they have brothers, they have fathers. Why are they not raging? Why are they not filled with unrelenting anger? We, we know that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Where is that scorn, ladies? We need to I just I think I think it's coming. I think we just need to get the word out about exactly what feminism means because you know I think feminists you know feminists are according to Fawcett nine percent of the population, you know, eleven percent of women in the UK. Um, and I think most of them are probably coffee shop feminists who know far less than femi about feminism than the likes of me or Bretta. But the likes of me or Greta can talk to them and say, hey, you know that feminism says this and lobbies for that? And that's when the anger will come. Well, I, I you know see. what? I, I, I have to say, make, make anti-feminism sexy. Honestly, the thing, it, yeah, exactly. The thing is, you're, you're beautiful women. And I think if you, if you say, look, I'm actually an empowered woman and feminism doesn't speak for me and i and um oh what's her name the australian beautiful uh youtube youtuber oh, daisy cousins daisy cousins yeah i mean i mean like we need more women like you and like daisy and you should all come together and do a and convention get on Pornhub. <laughs> And do and and do like a beautiful convention of. of I hear if we want to attract women, they're into like the harder stuff, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys know about the twenty two convention, uh, make women great again from mm -hmm. the menace. Uh, I can afford I, a ticket. 
Of course not. Of course not. But to be honest, I think you should maybe contact um, uh, Anthony Dream Johnson. You sh I think you should really contact Anthony Dream Johnson and say, look, we are some, we are so, some, some empowered women. women. Yeah. We are some great women and um, we are very happy to support you and to publicly support you because um, uh, I think Janice Fiamengo and him, they already had like an interview. And I think, mm -hmm. I think we, we need, really need to bring beautiful femininity into the anti-feminist movement. Uh, I, that should do the trick. I think you should just be like, I've got my ticket right here, boys. Ba bam <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Come to our convention. <laughs> Either or. Yeah. So well, shall thank we you shall so we so much everybody for such a lovely evening. Yeah. I should I, I should always have some whiskey here. It makes the uh, it makes the conversation uh, even more enjoyable. Yeah, Greta. And such lovely company. Greta, you did nothing. You were basically irrelevant. It was the alcohol. The alcohol is the true <laughs> gift of the evening. <laughs> um, but were you drinking that? Pardon? I said, were you drinking? No. Why am I drinking? Oh, I don't drink. You've got to edit all your bits out in that case. <laughs> yeah, well, to be <laughs> honest, um, I, 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 I stopped caring after the first couple of seconds, so I, I don't really mind. Um, <laughs> But it, it's been a real pri uh, privilege, guys. Thank you so much for that. And I hope we do it again soon. Yeah. Very Thank much. you, Greta. All right. Thank so you very much. We'll see you all again next week. Wait, Bye. but he's oh. got to do his bit. He's got to do his bit. Oh, hey, exactly. Hey, everybody. Like this video, share this video, and sus uh, subscribe to our channel. And uh, give, up, uh, give, give us a thumbs up. Please also visit uh, Greta's YouTube channel. Uh, what's the name of your uh, YouTube channel, Greta? Greta Aurora, A-U-R-O-R-A. -A. Okay. Thank you very much. And, and also patronize her on Patreon. Don't for be so content. Mansplain to her on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So thanks everybody for watching. It's lovely to have you all here. Good night. Night.